Hi, this is Derek with the Key Locations team. Today we're going to learn a little bit about how to log into the resident portal and use the different features. So if you go to our homepage, keyrentalhomes.com, in the top right corner you'll see under resources, resident portal login. You'll also see maintenance request. Both of these will actually take you to the same place because in order to submit a maintenance request, you have to log into the resident portal. So I'm going to click on this next tab uh, that I've already got set up. It's tenant web access. And we've set up this so that it's in my name as a sample so you can see what to do. But make sure to, if you're using the uh, portal for online payments, to read carefully this area up at the top so that you know when you can and can't submit a payment because payments do take a couple of business days to process. So if you're trying to make a payment on a Saturday or Sunday that's due on a Monday, that's not going to work because it's not going to give it enough time to process. So make sure you're looking at that when you're setting up payments for rent, etc. So we're going to go ahead and log in here. Click the little login button after entering my information. And I've got invalid username or password uh, because my username now should be my email address. That has just recently changed with a new system. So it's remembering what I had in there old. Let's see if we can get it to do that with my new email. There we go. So now we're in. You can see across the top in the gray bar the different places you can go. Uh, on the dashboard you can see actually most everything that you would see across the board. So we'll go to these items one at a time. Obviously your dashboard is, is showing you a lot of different areas. Note in the uh, left box over here where you can click just to email us. So if you're not submitting a maintenance request, but if you have a general question, it's better just to click on the email property manager button and send us your question, and we'll respond as soon as possible. We're going to go to charges now. So if you have rent due, it's going to show up here, and you can click on the make payment button to make a payment. And you'll need to click on the type of account you want to use. And you'll need to put it in amount. And then go to make payment. Since there's no balance due, it's not going to let you make a payment. See up here at the top too, save time and never forget a payment by enabling auto pay for this account. This is also a new feature. Some of you have already set us up to auto draft your account on the first of the month for your rent. But now we can automate that feature even further. So those of you that haven't done this yet, please go back in and you actually have to click now this little box right here, enable your automatic payment, day of the month, payment type, balance due. And if you want to set a maximum amount, then you can set that right there so you don't accidentally pay too much uh, but again, it's only going to pay the balance that's due on your account at that time. And the balance is usually just your rent unless you have other fees that are due. So you'll need to fill in all your credit card information in the different areas. And your billing information. And then make sure you remember to check the box. I agree to terms and conditions. And save. Once you've done that, then we don't even have to be a part of the process anymore. On the first of the month. Um, and I suggest you not do it more than later than the second of the month because you, again, might run into those times where it's going over holidays and non-banking days and that could make your payment late. So it's safe to uh, enable it for the first of the month, maybe the second of the month at the latest, but I wouldn't try to set it any farther in advance than that because it will not auto-adjust and you, your payment could be late. So we're going to go ahead and cancel out of that since we're not scheduling me for an auto-payment. 
we go into transactions here. If you have transactions, all of your rent payments, security deposit payments, everything was going to show up here. You can filter that by certain dates if you want to. We're going to go on to make a payment field, which we've actually already been into. And the service issues field is where you're going to add your maintenance request. So when you get in here, in the issue, put a description that uh, most closely matches what the problem is, a plumbing issue. Down here, please try to be as detailed as possible and explain where the problem's located, what you think the problem possibly could be, and if you've done anything to try and fix the problem or um, troubleshoot it, let us know there as well. Also, if it's an appliance, this is a great place to look up the little appliance tag on your appliance and go ahead and supply us with the make, model number, and serial number so that when you, we assign it to the appliance contractor, they'll already have that information when they call you and can possibly troubleshoot some of the issues over the phone without having to even come out there and look at the, the uh, appliance. So make that as detailed as you can. And remember, too, if you have separate issues that are unrelated, like a plumbing issue and an electrical issue, you need to make separate requests for that. If you have three different plumbing issues, it's fine to put it on the same request. But if you have unrelated issues, please create separate service issues for them because we assign these issues straight to the maintenance contractors. And if they're all stacked into one service issue, we can't spread them out and assign them to the proper vendors. So that's all there. Uh, make sure, too, if you're allowing us to enter without you being there, like we can release a key to the vendor or we can have one of our representatives meet the vendor out there to let them in. Also, if you have pets, make sure and click the pets box. And also in the description, maybe let us know, hey, you know, dogs locked in the uh, garage or whatever so that we're not um, letting your pet out or disturbing your pet if that's not necessary. Next button is leases. Your lease is going to be right here. It's going to show you the start and end date, and it's going to have your lease documents here. Now, again, this is just a placeholder I created, so we don't have any lease documents, but it's going to show a lease start and an expiration date. In your notes section, you're going to find all the notes that we might have left for you about the property or about any items that are going on with the property that uh, you would be privileged to read those notes. And then on your message board, you can add a message to us. We'll receive it there, a link to it, be able to go see it, and we'll be able to respond to it back on your message board again. Lastly, over on the far right side, under your login name, you can see where you can change your login email address, change your password, change your payment settings, and save auto pay info or log out. So that's basically it for this uh, little tutorial here. We're going to go ahead and log out, and we are done. So we hope you enjoy this and find it useful. Again, if you have any questions, you can always email us or just send us a message from your tenant web access. Thanks again.